Up next, incredible queen, a family member of mine, a superstar and a legend. She's the reigning queen of Oxford Street and has produced and choreographed many large-scale spectacles, including Mardi Gras and Sleazeball and many a flash mob. She's worked alongside a galaxy of stars, including Jimmy Barnes, Cher, Cindy Lauper, Kylie Minogue, Tina Arena, Denny Minogue and Australia's most famous drag performer, Carlotta. I don't know why I was left off that list. That's all right. Uh, she has won more Diva Awards than just about anyone and in 2016 was a semi-finalist on Channel 9's Australia's Got Talent and in 2019 was a featured judge on Channel 7's All Together Now. Please put your hands together for the Super Duper Mini Cooper! Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to tell you I'm Lebanese. <laughs> Thank you all for coming. I know the RuPaul Drag Race Grand Final is on right now, but you're here watching me, so suck it up, all right? <laughs> OK, here we go. Now, it has been said I was abandoned as a baby and left on the doorway of Ark Nightclub and that I was adopted and raised by drag queens. Well, I think it's about time I put that urban myth to rest. I am Minnie Cooper and this is my drag story. 25 and a virgin. <laughs> On Thursday the 26th of June 2014, I was given a gift. It was a chance meeting that without it, I wouldn't be the Minnie Cooper who you see standing before you today. It does feel very odd to say today, not tonight. Drag is definitely more night friendly, especially when you look like this. <laughs> this person I was about to meet may mean nothing to you, but means everything to me. She is the Tony Award winning actress for playing the role of Adelaide in Guys and Dolls. Her credits are varied and many. The woman was Faith Prince. Go check out her website, faithprince.com. I've only got 10 minutes, I've got to move on. She was in Australia doing concerts at the Sydney Opera House. She contacted ED5, a school where I teach dancing. Woo! Oh, got an ED5. -er. Oh, Chris McGovern, you faggot. <laughs> <laughs> Was always a faggot. <laughs> asking them, she called ED5, asking them would they be interested in her teaching a masterclass for their students. Fortunately for me, she had no transport to get there. ED5 is in Strathfield, 45 minutes out of the city. I was asked, would I drive her? And I said, let me think about that. Fuck yes! <laughs> I picked her up from the Sheraton on the park in my little Suzuki Alto, which I did have cleaned the night before. <laughs> I asked her why she contacted ED5. She said, I love teaching and giving back and being able to inspire people and give them the tools I personally use that have helped me with my success. I was amazed to hear someone who I respected and was also fangirling over, showed so much generosity. That's lesson number one right there, give back. Before I was Minnie Cooper, I worked as a professional chorus boy in musical theatre. Drag was definitely in my blood though. In 1996, I was 25, working on Crazy For You. The opening tap number was so fabulous. The girls wore this gayest pink fluffy candy costume. <laughs> One night, so many girls were off. With me being the dance captain of the show and knowing the routine, they frocked me up and on I went. Guess who was the prettiest girl that night? Hey! <laughs> and P.S. The strangest thing happened that night. Those tap shoes magically appeared in my bag at the end of the night. They are still the ones I wear today. Thank you, Gordon Frost. <laughs> I grew up in the western suburbs of Sydney, Granville. There was a Granville train disaster, then there was me. <laughs> Hollywood musicals have always been a part of my life since I was very young. My love from these movies came from my mum. <sighs> We would watch them every weekend, and I was obsessed. I always say I started drag at around six. I used to fantasise being those glamorous women of Technicolor like Anne Miller and Judy Garland. 
I would always try to dress like them and dance like them. So my non-judgmental mum, who never discouraged me from dressing up, she signed me up for dance classes even. It was there I discovered I had this booming voice and natural gift for tap dancing. Even though the rest of my family and pretty much well everyone else thought it was wrong that a boy would dance and dress up like a girl, my mother never discouraged me as she saw it gave me joy. What more can you ask of a parent who loves their child unconditionally and lets them live their authentic self? This is harder than I thought. As I got older, I became more aware and stopped with the cross-dressing because it wasn't normal. Uh, the only gay man I ever remember seeing was Tim Curry as Frankenfurter. I was like, is that what I am? Well, <laughs> yes. But at the time, it was a little bit scary. When I was in my teens, AIDS was all over the media. The Grim Reaper ad, Rock Hudson dying. Rock was the name my brothers used to call me. It was around that I started having those thoughts something was wrong with me. When I was 15, my mum's brother, Uncle Neil, passed away. We were told he died of cancer. At the funeral, my mum was crying in such pain. I'd never heard a cry like that before. It was gut-wrenching. My mum said Auntie Lorraine told her that Neil didn't die of cancer, but AIDS. I remember it as clear as I'm standing here now. It was that at that moment I decided I was never going to tell her I was gay, let alone do drag. I would never want to cause my mother that much pain. I also remember at 16, looking in the mirror, feeling so much shame, crying, thinking, who would want to love someone like me? I really thought about ending it. This is why positive representation is so important and why I love Drag Race. Not just because it shows the world what a fabulous art form drag is, but also some little boy like me would watch that show and think it's okay to be who they are and they are not alone. My first boyfriend, William Forsyth, yes, I've had a boyfriend. <laughs> it was through him I was introduced to the gay world of Oxford Street. William was a dancer on the strip and choreographed drag shows and the Mardi Gras parties. I would go watch him perform at the midnight shift Wednesday night in Transformers. I was transfixed by these manly but magical creatures and a quiet little voice inside me was saying, I'd like to do that. Through the next 10 years, I would also become a part of the drag scene, choreographing shows for Mitzi McIntosh and Chelsea Bunn. I would also occasionally frock up and go out and drag socially. I thought I looked beautiful, but I looked like a big toe. Mm. <laughs> this year, I'm celebrating 20 years since I did my first paid gig as a professional cross-dresser. Thank you. 20 fucking years, where's that going? Right here. <laughs> it was on this night I had the taste of really being a drag performer. I realised I wanted to entertain people instead of my cur current job being a chorus boy, which is basically just moving scenery. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> in 2003, I was in between jobs and Chelsea Bunn asked me would I work with her at the King's Cross Hotel. I was like, sure, I'm in between jobs, and 18 years later, I'm still in between jobs. <laughs> Thank you, Chelsea Bunn, for offering me that job. It's given me a career I never thought I'd have, and I'm so grateful. I wouldn't change it for anything, especially when you look like this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See you later. <laughs> uh, 14 years later, when I drove up to sh the Sheraton to pick up Miss Prince, I was now a full-time working drag queen. I couldn't have been busier. I had stopped singing and dancing. All my performing life, I'd always worked for other people but had never really done anything for me. Yeah, I know, really. Mm. Oh, everyone go on. Oh, thank you. 
going, oh God, get on with it. <laughs> Faith Prince started her masterclass by talking about guys and dolls. When at first she didn't actually get an audition for the role of Adelaide, her agent was told that she wasn't right and it was basically a waste of her time. She felt like she was born to play this role, so she called the producers and says, I really want to audition, and they agreed. She performed the song she did for her audition. It was captivating. When she finished, she said, I'm not the best singer, but I'm a great storyteller. And I thought, well, well, that's me. If it wasn't for her asking to get an audition, she never would have won that Tony Award. Amazing, huh? Lesson number two, always ask for what you want, respect the answer, and don't have a sense of entitlement. I've had all these things I've wanted to do, but was never asked or had the opportunity to show what I was capable of. She actually gave me the permission that it was okay to ask. Lesson number three, fuck all those other bitches and start doing things for you. <laughs> After meeting Faith, I created Drag to Riches, mentoring young drag, young drag talent. Lesson number one, giving back. I started singing again. When approached to host the Diva Awards, I asked if I could do an opening number, which led to the iconic Anything Goes performance. Lesson number two, always ask for what you want. Australia's Got Talent in my cabaret shows. Lesson number three, fuck all those other bitches. <laughs> Putting all these things into practice have given me so much joy and also a career that even I'm jealous of it. <laughs> I'd just like to say thank you, Miss Prince, for giving me these gifts. I was able to achieve things I never thought I would. Sometimes you just gotta have a little faith. Give it up for Faith Prince. Amazing. <laughs> One other date which is big for me is August the 9th, 2017. It was the day the plebiscite was announced. It took me back to my 15-year-old self where I realised I still carried all that shame about being gay and doing drag. I wish I understood at 15 what I know now. Shame has really stopped me from having the best possible relationship with the person who loves me unconditionally, my mother. From that day onwards, I started to be kind to myself and talking about my shame to set me free of it. I haven't always been the best son because of it, but things are definitely getting better. I know she would be so proud, and I look forward to the day that I can stand in front of my mum and say, wholeheartedly, I am what I am. Thank you for listening to my story. And by the way, I wasn't on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs>